Welcome to the next video in our Maintaining a Balance series. So today we're going to be looking at the dot point, explain the adaptive advantage of hemoglobin. So it's an explained dot point, so we need to look at cause and effect and adaptive, so how it has changed, advantage, what makes it good, and looking particularly at this molecule called hemoglobin. So we're going to use a little bit of an analogy to explain what hemoglobin is. So we've all seen money trucks driving around from place to place and then out jumps a little armor guard that carries the money bags into the bank and drops off the money. So in relation to hemoglobin, our money truck is like a red blood cell. So hemoglobin is carried in the red blood cells and just like a red blood cell, the sole function of the money truck is to carry money. So the sole function of a red blood cell is to carry hemoglobin, which carries oxygen. The armed guard is like the hemoglobin. So he sits in the money truck, travels around in the money truck, and his job is to hold on to the money. So the hemoglobin's job is to hold on to the oxygen. The money bag is like the heme group in the hemoglobin. So the heme group is a particular part of the hemoglobin which holds on to their own little bit of oxygen. And then our money in our analogy is like the oxygen. So the main job of our hemoglobin is to help get oxygen from uh, our lungs to all the cells in our body. So hemoglobin is found in our red blood cells. There are million of, millions of red blood cells in our body and their only function is to carry oxygen. As we talked about when looking at the components of blood, unlike our white blood cells, the red blood cells do not have a nucleus. This allows them to hold many hemoglobin molecules. One red blood cell can hold approximately 280 to 300 million hemoglobin molecules. Just like enzymes, hemoglobin is a protein made up of four polypeptide chains. The most important part of the hemoglobin is the heme group, which is more or less made up of iron. The chemical symbol for iron is Fe. There is one heme group attached to each of the four polypeptide chains, so each hemoglobin molecule carries four heme groups. The globin part of the name refers to the protein, so hemoglobin is a globular protein. When the blood passes by the lungs, the oxygen diffuses out of the alveoli and into the capillaries where it attaches to the heme group in the red blood cells. So it's important to note that the oxygen doesn't attach to the uh, protein itself, it attaches to the heme group that is found within that protein. People who suffer from anemia have low iron levels in their blood. A common symptom of anemia is tiredness as there's not enough oxygen getting around the cells to carry out cellular respiration as there is less iron and therefore less hemoglobin. People with anemia can take iron supplements in order to help maintain appropriate levels of iron in the blood. Females are more susceptible to anemia due to the process of menstruation. So here we can see the general shape of a red blood cell. They are biconcave, which means that they dip inwards towards the middle on both sides. So if we were to flip this over, it would be the same on the other side. They look a bit like a donut that hasn't had the hole in the middle punched out. Here in this top corner, we can see the generalized structure of a hemoglobin molecule with its four iron groups, so our four heme groups and four oxygen molecules attached. So one oxygen molecule attached to each of the four heme groups. And lastly, this picture here shows the more complex three-dimensional structure of a hemoglobin molecule. So the four polypeptide chains, we've got a yellow, a brown, a pink, and a purple. And then the little red dot with uh, sort of on the blue structure in there are the heme groups attached to each of the four polypeptide chains. So what are some advantages of hemoglobin? Why, basically, why do we have it? Which is really what we need to look at for this dot point. So we know that the chemical equation for cellular respiration is glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water and energy. This reaction takes place in every cell, so we need glucose and oxygen to create the energy. So without the oxygen getting to the cells, we can't have cellular respiration take place, and therefore energy production doesn't happen. So basically everything we do, we need oxygen for. So the first advantage of hemoglobin is it allows more oxygen to be carried in the blood. Every hemoglobin molecule carries four oxygen molecules. 
Oxygen doesn't dissolve very well in water, so only small amounts of oxygen could diffuse into the blood plasma, as we've already looked at, is 90% water. The haemoglobin offers a second way to carry the oxygen. So our red blood cells have millions of haemoglobin molecules, therefore can carry four times millions of oxygen molecules. So if we have approximately 300 million haemoglobin molecules per red blood cell, this means that each red blood cell can carry four times 300 million, which is you know, a massive amount of oxygen molecules. So on the, on the one hand, only 2% of oxygen is dissolved in the plasma, which is a, an extremely small percentage versus the 98% that can be carried in the haemoglobin. The second advantage is haemoglobin becomes more likely to bind with oxygen once the first few molecules have attached. So when the first oxygen molecule attaches itself to the haemoglobin, its structure changes slightly. This means that more oxygen molecules can attach themselves easier, and therefore we can be sure that more oxygen can leave the alveoli, enter the blood, head to the cells, and carry out respiration. The third and final advantage that we're going to look at is that haemoglobin releases oxygen at the site where it is needed. So red blood cells have no nucleus, so how do they know where to release the oxygen? We know that from our cellular respiration reaction that carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct. This diffuses out of the cells and into the blood where it dissolves in the plasma and reduces the pH. And as a result, the blood becomes more acidic. The lowered pH is a sign for the red blood cells to release oxygen. And this is because the structure of hemoglobin is less effective when the pH of its surroundings is lower. So therefore, the oxygen molecules will leave the hemoglobin and diffuse into the cells. Now we will have oxygen in the cells for cellular respiration to take place. And because the oxygen molecules have de-attached themselves from the haemoglobin, the carbon dioxide molecules that are there can attach themselves to the red blood cells and become carb amino haemoglobin, which we looked at a little bit uh, recently. And then the red blood cells carries the carbon dioxide back to the lungs where it diffuses into the alveoli, we breathe it out and our carbon dioxide levels return to normal. So that's all for this video. Uh, hopefully it has explained the adaptive advantages of hemoglobin nice and easy for you. Thanks.